this today with you. And so today we're looking forward and I'm looking forward to sharing a word with you today that I hope will help to refresh you a little bit, even during this time. I mean, you know, this has been a time of uncertainty for many and for all. And so I'm praying that we're in the place now where we're able to start looking at what it means for us to look, to start looking forward to, to a new day and a new future. And so today we're looking to looking forward to sharing this word with you. And my goal is for you to be refreshed. If you want to need to be refreshed today, just say refreshed. Amen. Refreshed. And so we want you to be refreshed and we want your joy to be renewed. And so again, we send a special shout out to our friends at the Bible Project for always providing us with those quality materials for sharing and teaching the gospel in this way. And so we're grateful that there are resources out there that support ministries like our own. And so today as part of, I want us to remember that part of sharing the gospel is us recognizing that it is actually good news. Amen. And so if you can type that today, if you know it's good news, send me a good news. But, you know, part of us understanding that the gospel is good news is remembering that it's good news and how it's good news. But here's my question. Who is it good news to? Who is it actually good news to? How is it actually good news? And, you know, as we are growing and maturing in our faith, this is, these are questions we never really ask ourselves any longer. You know, we don't ask ourselves that anymore because we built our lives already on the answers to these questions. Yes, I see good news down there. Thank you all. Amen. And if you've been in the church a little while, you probably stop. You just know that it's good news, but you don't really think about why it's good news anymore. But there's nothing like crisis, you know, to shake us to our core. You know, there's nothing like crisis that, to put us in a position to rediscover the foundation that we're actually built on, which is the good news. Amen. Hallelujah. And so when the storms of life begin to been blow, right, as the storms of life are blowing and when logic and money have just run their course on you. And when our friends and family for no fault of their own are nowhere around and it's just you and your thoughts, what do you rely on to help you hang in there? What are you relying on today? You know, what is giving you the strength to press on into another day? I want you to think about that. And this is probably a good time to think about that. Amen. I hear, I hear in the chat, I see renew a right spirit within us, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. And so I want you to remember that, that you have to ask, what are you laying, what are you leaning on today? What are the things that you carry on and lean on when you are in your time of crisis? And so today we're exploring just that. We are going to look at just that. And we're going to start over the next few weeks looking into this actual water that refreshes a really weary world. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. We are exploring the water of life. Anybody say water of life today? Water of life. Yes. Water of life. And so I want to ask you something. Now we're talking about the water of life. Let's do this. When was the last time you were really thirsty? I want you to take a moment to go, hmm, let me think about that. When was the last time I was like, really thirsty. Not like I'm drinking my morning minty thirsty right now. I'm talking about like really thirsty, really thirsty. Take a minute. I want you to bring that image into your mind. When was the last time that you were really thirsty? Or when is one of the times you remember being really thirsty? Do you have it? You got it? All right. So if you have that in your mind, I know that for some of you being thirsty Looked a little like this, right? Yeah, I see this little girl and she's at the park. You're outside at the park. Yes, I see after a basketball game, people are shooting me words after a basketball game. And, you know, you may have been like this little girl at one point. She's at the park, enjoying the playground, having all this fun. And then all of a sudden it hits. Oh, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. And you run around and we used to be able to look for water fountains in the park. <laughs> We probably don't advise so much for you to, to, to drink from the park water so much anymore. But we used to run and look for these water fountains in the park or at least for a bottle of water. And we would quench our thirst. And it was just the most glorious thing to touch your, to touch your tongue, to have that water touching your tongue. 
But believe it or not, what you don't know is you actually looked at the water fountain. You, you were enjoying the water like this. This is so beautiful, right? The water just looks so good and cold and she's enjoying this water. But to the rest of the world, I'm going to tell you what, you look like this. This is what you look like at that water fountain because you were like this little puppy here. You were actually groveling and slurping and desperate to get that water down your throat, okay? You were out there <laughs> lapping up this water. And I, yep, I see some of you laughing out there. Don't laugh too loudly, though. <laughs> because, and I'm telling you, we look like this to folks when we're really thirsty. We are just trying to get it into our bodies. And, and I don't want you to laugh too loudly because, you know, I know some of you too. And we've gone to the restaurant and maybe you've eaten something too spicy and you've decided that you want to drink a, a, a bottle of soda. And so you're just, you know, slurping, trying to hide the fact that you are that you're actually um, drinking the soda because you, things are spicy going down your throat. But to the rest of us, I'm going to tell you what, you look like this. This is what you look like. You are, we know that you drank this soda down so quickly because your mouth is on fire. Okay. Your mouth is on fire because, and you're just trying to slurp for every last inch of soda that is in that bottle. Lord have mercy, this poor thing. But you know, some, think about when the last time was that you were really, thirsty, really thirsty. And so I'm going to, I'm going to share a story with you. I'm going to share a story with you because you know, I like stories. I like story time. So I'm going to show you this slide. Can, can y'all see that? You see these people on this bungee? Can y'all see that? Check it if you can see that. You can see that? Good. Well, I remember when I was in high school, I worked at a Paramount Park. And this Paramount theme park was called Canada's Wonderland. And so I worked at a pizza shop that was busy from open until close. I mean, I think the pizza place was the most important place on the, on the Paramount Park campus. Everybody ate at this pizza pizza. And so I worked at this pizza shop that was busy from morning till close. And I had a, my cousin, Charlene, was there with me. We both worked at the same pizza shop. And we realized how needful food was and drink was to people because they would always ask us if you have anything left we'll gladly take it we'll pay whatever price for it well we made a deal with some folks that worked at the bungee ride down the down the way from us and we decided to exchange some pizza for a ride on the bungee we had never ridden rode a, a bungee before but we decided that we wanted to try it for the first time so instead of paying the price for it we went ahead and exchanged a box of pizza. We bartered. So they happily agreed to let us do this. Long story short, we didn't realize how high in the air it would take us until we were hoisted way up into the air, way into the city limits. And I'm telling you, you can see all across, if, you know where, if you've been there before, you know, I, I can see all the way to the end of the town of Vaughn, <laughs> which is the city limits of the place I was in from how high up we were in the air on one of these contraptions, just like this one, three people. And when we got up that high, we became really scared. And so we squabbled and we were wondering who was going to pull the rip cord because we knew the only way down was to what? Pull the rip cord. <laughs> they were gonna let us down. They said, the only way down is for you to pull the rip cord. And so just before one of us released it and I said, we were gonna count it down. I got really scared because I looked down on the ground and there was a very large painting I never knew existed there before. And you can only see it from that high up. And it was a picture of a Coke bottle and it said, mouth a little dry yet? And I panicked because <laughs> I didn't even know this painting existed until we were that high up. And so eventually we jumped, we clearly survived it. I'm here. Um, but I want you to think about what it's like when you're thirsty. I just want you to think about it. What, what are some of the symptoms of being thirsty? So I want you to take a minute and I want you to jot those down. I told you, remember to get some paper, some pens, some scratch paper, something. But I want you to take a second and I want you to jot those down. I'm actually going to give you a minute timer. Go for it. Take a minute and write down your thoughts. And you, if you don't want to write it down on paper, go ahead and share them in the chat room. I'm watching. Let me see, what are some of the symptoms of thirst? Let's see what you come up with. I see foamy mouth. Okay. 
And if you're sitting around someone, go ahead and share the, share with them what you're thinking. Oh, I hear dehydration, feeling overheated, difficulty paying attention. Yes, white fuzzy view, panting, tired, dry mouth, dry throat, dry lips. Yes. Wow, these are good, guys. Keep them coming. How much time we have? 17 seconds. We're... Oh, I saw some of you say they become a bit grouchy. I like that. Tired, fatigue, yes, very true, very true. We've got five more seconds, lack of speed, yeah, nausea, when it gets really severe, mm -hmm, that's good, perfect, hot, yes. And Josh, I know you, so you're definitely probably really hot when that happens, I love it. <laughs> and so I was, we're asking this question about what was it like the last time you were really thirsty? And it's true, because thirst is interesting because it often has some of the same symptoms as hunger. It has a lot of the same symptoms as hunger. And I'm going to list some of the symptoms and just think about what you wrote in here today or what you wrote down. And I want you to keep track. Some of you said headaches, sluggish, nausea, dizziness, um, everything except for everything that was written here, except for maybe dry eyes are all hunger or thirst. They could be both. Aside from dry eyes, they, they probably could be both. And I know that I have some medical professionals on the line, so I feel safe and safe in saying that. And does anybody know what one of the best ways is to find out if you're actually thirsty? I'll give you a second. If you could get some guesses, what some of the what is one of the easiest ways to find out if it's actually hunger or thirst? See dry lips. Okay, I see some some more answers coming in. So what's one of the best ways to figure that out? What's the easiest way to figure it out? Ooh, I see drink something. Drink water. Yes, 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 yes. I think we're agreeing on that. Drink something, drink water. Exactly. And what, so actually one of the best ways is to drink some water. Is to actually go ahead and drink. Because if you drink water and wait 15 minutes and you still have stomach grumbling, you're probably hungry at that point. But you should drink some water and see. And so if you're drinking a glass of water or eating a snack and it doesn't seem to satisfy you, that's something different, believe it or not. Because if you're thirsty and you drink water, it'll turn off the thirst. If you're hungry after you drink the water, you probably need to eat something. But here's something else. If you eat something and it doesn't satisfy you, guess what? You're probably not even hungry. You are having a craving. You're actually having emotional hunger. It's not true hunger. So it's interesting how even the symptoms of one thing can look like it can actually be many different things. Because if you're truly hungry and you eat something, it'll satisfy your hunger. You can eat anything and it'll satisfy hunger. But if you're like, I feel like I just want something, something sweet. I feel like I just, I feel like that, that just didn't do it for me. That, that's, that's a craving. That's another thing. We need to cover that on another week about cravings. Amen. <laughs> but, you know, and I know I have health professionals on the line, so I feel comfortable with what I just said. But all of this is important because, and you're probably asking yourself, well, what does that really even have to do with our spiritual lives? What does all of this jib jab have to do with our spiritual lives? And we have to ask ourselves about, our, about spiritual thirst. What about spiritual thirst? Hmm. And so you know that your spirit can th be thirsty too, right? How many know that your spirit can be thirsty? Raise your hand if you know your spirit can be thirsty. You can have a spiritual thirst. And a thirsty spirit does not display the same way as physical thirst does in your body. But when you experience it, it is definitely uncomfortable. And it is a real sensation. It's a real sensation and a real feeling. It, it's more of like that feeling of emptiness. Emptiness. It's, also, it's more like something missing or something just not being quite right. You know, it's, it's that feeling when you finally accomplish a goal or you finally buy the thing that you've been saving for or you gain the attention of those you were seeking from or the relationship that you were working so hard to maintain. You get everything that you're looking for and you're still not satisfied. There's still a longing. You say, why didn't this thing that I just obtained or just achieved, why didn't it fulfill me forever? Why am I still longing? Why do I still feel dry? Why do I still feel dry? 
And so let's jump into the Word of God to help see if we can find some answers today. As I said, this is probably the first of, of three, three, three um, messages we'll use to talk about this. But let's talk about the spiritual thirst and remind ourselves about why we need good news. So today we're going to Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. So if you're following along in your Bibles, we've got Jeremiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. And of course, I'm going to share it with you on the screen. So if you want to follow along, you can. I'm going to be reading in the NIV today. Amen. So if you're ready to dig into the word, just say, send me an amen. Send me an amen or a hand clap something. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So, so let's go into the word. Amen. I see the way amen. Thank you, amen. So let's go into the word. And this is Jeremiah here as we read. The word of the Lord came to me. Go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember the devotion of your youth. How as a bride you loved me and followed me through the wilderness, through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord the first fruits of his harvest. All who devoured her were held guilty and disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, descendants of Jacob, all you clans of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your ancestors find in me that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and ravines, a land of drought and utter darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives. I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and rich produce. But you came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detestable, O Lord. The priest did not ask, where is the Lord? Those who deal with the law did not know me. The leaders rebelled against me. Hmm. The prophets prophesied by Baal following worthless idols. Therefore, I bring charges against you again, declares the Lord, and I will bring charges against your children's children. Cross over to the coast of Cyprus and look. Send to Kedar and observe closely. See if there has been anything like this. Has a nation ever changed its gods? Yet they are not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. Say worthless idols. And be appalled at this. Your heavens and shudder with great horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. Let me see two up in the air. See two. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Blessed be the reading of his word. Today, with the time that we have left, we're going to have the first of three discussions. And so we are going to have this topic of living water for a few weeks. So stay with me. And I hope you come back for the next few weeks because I want you to finish the series with us because we're not going to conclude it today. There's no way for us to conclude the thought today. But I want to make sure that you get the whole thing. So stay with us. Now, but in Jeremiah 2, we hear the prophet make some very serious accusations. He makes these very serious accusations to the children of Israel. And Jeremiah accuses the Israelites of trusting in false gods, right? And he also accuses them of trusting in false sources of life. 
And he eventually paints this picture in the, in these verses, and especially in verse 13. And I'm going to go back to verse 13 really quickly. Especially in verse 13, we find that he says that the people are like, are trusting in their own broken cisterns. And can you see that there? It says that the people are trusting in broken cisterns that don't hold any water and basically can't give them what they need. We're, we're tracking. So let's look at this with some examples that we're probably really familiar with. Let's look at this in our own common era. Anybody know what this is? Raise your hands if you know what that is. You know what this is on the screen? Seen one of these before? Yep, a few of you have. All right. Wave your hand. This, so this is a this is a well. You know a well? It looks like a well? Good. So this is a well. Now, do you know how wells work? Yeah, I see well, well, well. <laughs> Pastor Mike said, well, well, well. Do you know how wells work? And I want you to ask yourself, hmm, do I know how a well works? How do I get the water from a well? How does how do wells actually work? What you think of that? I I know some I know some little folks. Then know what I see Asia's hand up in the air. Asia, you want to answer? How do how do wells work? You put the bucket in the water and then draw it back out and then water is in there. Mm -hmm. It's clean water usually. Clean water usually. Good point. And so and we then we have to ask ourselves, how does the water even make it into the well? Right? So yes, and I'm seeing that I say got it. I see somebody say gotta crank that thing. <laughs> and somebody else says you have to draw deep down to get the water amen and you're definitely onto something sister charlotte with drawing deep down to get the well water and so many people historically have um taken advantage of natural springs and settlements and so as you can see in the background you can see that there's some water there so you want to look at that kind of like a natural spring okay and so these natural springs where people would build these settlements they would dig around them to tap into the vein of the of the groundwater. So here's probably an example of what groundwater looks like. If you're looking at the soil layers that are beneath you, if you have like the impervious layer, the soil zone, the intermediate zone water level, and then you see groundwater way at the bottom. And so the groundwater is an actual source of water. When we say source, it's an actual source of water. And so what you're working with is taking and digging all the way down into the source of the water so that you can put your bucket in or your pump in and get that water back up to the surface. So you're going directly to the source. Amen? We're following? We got that? Raise your hand if you got that. Good. All right. So let's let's do this now. Let me ask you about this. You, got, you understand wells. Anybody know what this is? Type in the chat if you know what this is. Tell me if you know what that is on the screen. Yes. Lisa says, inside a toilet. <laughs> That's right. Toilet tent. Go for it. Toilet pump. Yes, it is. Amen. Amen. We got some answers there. We have our toilet tank inside of the pump. Yes, it is. And so the tank on your toilet, oh, goodness. Lisa said she changed hers many times, so she knows exactly what it is. <laughs> So the part of the toilet that you're looking at right now is not the bowl. It is what, you, what you've what you already identified as the tank, right? The tank is also called a cistern, say cistern. So if you were to go to purchase one of these and replace it at the store, you would be replacing the cistern. And it's where we hold the water that we use to flush the toilet. Got that? Yes, cistern. I'm gonna show you this picture. This is an, another example of a cistern. You see that, that black tank that's sitting there? That's also, called, that's also a cistern. And so this is like a modern cistern tank system that I, that I would come across in parts of Jamaica. And so when I was a little girl and used to visit there, we used to have very big cement tanks 
um, that people would build. And so they would go and they dig deep into the ground and they were deeper than swimming pools and they would paint them to prevent cracking and anything else. And they would fill them up with water. And so that was a source of water. And they would have to cover them over because if you get any animals in there, or of course people might fall in, but if you get any animals in there, it would spoil the water source, right? So as times have progressed, these more modern plastic and also sometimes metal tanks are found in neighborhoods absolutely everywhere. And water trucks come and deliver the water and they will pump it into, they will pump it right into the, into the system. And then you have this allotment of water for as long as you have it for, amen? And so this is a very common sight to, to see some of these tanks or cisterns on the side of homes. I'll tell you a story about this. On one of my more recent trips, one of my more recent trips to Jamaica, we were staying with a family who had one of these. They had a really large version of one of these. And unfortunately, while we were there, someone forgot, you could see the spout at the bottom. Somebody forgot to close the spout on one of these tanks. And we had, I, I kid you not, over 12 people staying at this one particular house that we were in. And the water was gone because they forgot to close the cistern. <laughs> Can you imagine? And so we were like, well, where are we going to get more water from? And they said, the water, the water truck only comes every few days. So we're just going to have to find ways to hack it. I know I got family members on the line that can confirm that this is true. So can you imagine when you have a fixed water supply that when it's drained and you go and you don't know that it's drained or if your tank cracks and you don't know that it's cracked, you might show up to get some water one day and it's not there. Hmm. Food for thought. So let's, so I wanted to make sure that you had in your mind the visual, the picture of what it means when we talk about cisterns in the Bible. And because, you know, traditionally speaking with the cisterns that were more probably like the tanks that I described earlier, the open tanks, they would take, they were filled with rainwater. So when we talk about the children of Israel, their cisterns that they would hold water with, they would Usually when rainwater would come, they would collect it and they would hold them. And so if their well was dry or they weren't connected to a well, they still had access to water in these containers that they kept near their homes. So let's go back again into Jeremiah 12 and 13. So it reads, my people have committed, like we said, two, here we got two, two sins, right? It says they forsaken me, the spring of the living water and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. I want you to think about that now. Now that we've talked about the different types of cisterns, so we talk about cisterns and wells that come from springs. And he says that not only, he says that they not only forsook him as the spring itself where the well draws from, they also made their own cisterns that are broken and can't hold anything either. My God. So although we can now fill cisterns by trucks with water and pumps, we cannot fill all the cisterns in our life. Amen. Jesus is like groundwater. Amen. I see that down there. And so I want you to think about that. I want you to start thinking about where we are right now with Jesus being the groundwater, the wells that we pull from, and also the cisterns that we carry it in. I want you to think about that. At the time that, we, that the Bible was written, as I said, they were filling it with rainwater. And the cisterns were really used in dry regions to store water in case the wells fail or the rainwater becomes really irregular. So when you think about a cistern, I want you to always remember that somebody has to actually fill a cistern. You have to actively go out and fill a cistern. It's not a well. It's not a spring. You have to actually go out and fill the cistern. You've got to actively do something. You already say, fill a cistern, right? Say, I have to fill the cistern. I have to fill the cistern. When you say that, say me. I have to fill the cistern. Amen. So, so God 
goes ahead in this verse and accuses his people of two related failures, as he said. First, he says that they forgot about him as the spring or source from which they can get the well water. And then they made their own emergency water containers, right? They made their own emergency water containers for the dry season. But the containers that they built for themselves are broken. <laughs> can you imagine that? Can you imagine that you've set aside something for an emergency only to find out that it's spoiled? Can you imagine that you've set aside all these bags of flour so that you can, you can bake and cook and make, make roti or tortillas or whatever you make? And you say, hey, there's no more at the store. But guess what? I have this big bag of flour in my garage. And you go and it's just eaten up with bugs and weevils. Can you imagine? What the, how devastating that must be to think that you have something, something for an emergency. And when you go to use it in the emergency, it does not exist. It's broken or destroyed. Hmm. See, we, we talked about this a little bit last week. We touched on this a bit last week. But let's talk about this again. You know. What I'm going to ask you a question. What are some of the things that we turn to when things are broken? What are some of the things that we're turning to, that any of us are turning to, instead of God when we're experiencing life's emergencies? What are we? I see somebody in the, in the chat said chocolate. Amen. <laughs> well, you know, what are some of the things that you're turning to, or that you know people in general, in general, turn to? when they're experiencing life's emergencies. More to think about, you know, what or who do you turn to when you're anxious or uncertain? Hallelujah, I'm seeing people are turning to food, chocolate, other people, distractions through busy work, sleeping, sleeping, YouTube, music, self-reasoning, ooh. They said I turned to a God. I turned to God and my mommy. Of course, I, I turned to my mommy too. Trust me. <laughs> Whether they're listening or not, I'm talking at them. <laughs> YouTube. I'm telling you. Think of all the things that we're filling our lives with when things are broken, right? You know who. Uh, so, what are some of the powerful self-made sources of stability that we're trusting in our own lives? Oh, I see somebody say they turned to their teddy. I get that. Money. Yes. Wait, yeah, let's talk about those self-made sources of stability. Money is a self-made source of stability. If, you know, if you've ever taught economics or, or, or took an economics class, you know that our money isn't backed by gold. It's, it's just a promise. It's a note. Ooh, I see money, physical appearance. What are some other so, so, sources of stability that we think we have? There's so many, huh? So many things. Shopping. Oh my gosh. What are we doing now that the stores are closed? Are you just shopping online now? Are we, are we all Cyber Monday people now? Cyber every day? <laughs> Lisa says relationships. Yes. I mean, we're expecting relationships to fill those gaps even more now, aren't we? So there's so much, there's so many other things that we are, that we will turn to first in times where, where things are broken. Oh yeah. I see alcohol also. Yes. There are people, we turn to alcohol, we turn to smoking. We turn, we turn to all kinds of things, good, bad, or indifferent. Anything in excess can be bad for you, right? So I want you to think about that. What am I turning to during this time? What am I turning to when things are uncertain or, or I'm having anxiety? But, you know, as we're, as we're starting to wrap up, just our thoughts on this. I mean, I did say um, that we're going to continue to address spiritual thirst. A couple more things I do want to cover, though. Let's look at this psalm right here. Um, psalm 42 and two, I'm going to give you a couple of lines of scripture. It says, my soul thirsts for God, the living God. When can I go and meet with God? You know, so, so we have to ask ourselves, do we ever feel like the psalmist does? When, when things are, when I'm thirsty, I hear glue. When, when I'm thirsty, do I ever say, when do I get the chance to talk to God about this? Is that ever your response? You don't have to answer. I'm just asking is that ever your response? When do I get the chance to go home and talk to God? When do I get the chance to get into prayer and talk to God? When do I get to reach out and talk to God? I can't wait to talk to God so I can meet my third. Something to consider. What about this? Psalm 63 says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. 
toilet paper anymore. We're, we're finally starting to see what it looks like when there is none of something. Amen? When you can go as many weeks in a row and it's, there's none there. Hallelujah. Some of you are saying that, you know, sometimes you sing to God to get close and to get comfort. Some of you, know, when you're weak, you have, weak, you have to go to the fountain. Amen. There's so much going on, so much good words in the chat. Keep them coming. Hallelujah. But yes, we have to ask ourselves, you know, if you're dry and you're thirsty, are you leaping into God first? Are you doing that? Does he even come to your mind as a source? Hallelujah. Yes, CC did write a song from that song. Amen. And so like the psalmist, you know, the first thing, I'm going to go back to that song really quickly. I'll leave it up for a little bit. But like that psalmist, you know, the first thing we need to do is acknowledge that we're living in a time where our cisterns are being exposed as cracked and empty. I'm not even talking about the source anymore. There is no toilet paper in, in the supply chain, y'all. I'm sorry. So the source is gone. So what do you have in your, in your house? What have, you, what have you stacked up for a rainy day? And do you still have that? You know, this is what we're talking about is the fact that the cisterns that we have are, are cracked and sometimes just empty. What we have on reserve for ourselves to preserve ourselves physical or spiritual, are starting to run dry. Our economy, our stock market, our health, our relationships, our achievements, none of these things have been able to quench the effects of the crisis that we are in. Am I right? And even if you had some security put away, we found that even those plans and devices have limits. Yes, they do. And so we've seen families devastated by death during this season. We've seen businesses that have been around for decades. They've lost everything in a few weeks. We've seen stock earnings plummet overnight. I suggest you don't even look at the stock market right now unless you, unless you absolutely have to because overnight we see things just disappear. Even our houses of worship, church, right? Even these have been closed to the public at a time when we probably need them the most, amen? And so we have to ask ourselves, because it's the, because the building itself ain't nothing but a cistern itself, right? So all of our cisterns are showing their limits. They're showing their limits. And we are finding ourselves without water. We are finding ourselves without water. And so when I, but when I started today, I said that this was about good news. So if it's about good news, everybody say good news. I'm not here to just rag on what's not working. Let's, let's start to talk a little bit about what's working so we can pick up on this again next week. So I'm going to actually just leave you with the words of Jesus. Amen. Good news. Good news. And so I'm going to leave you with the words of Jesus. And remember, we're coming back to this next week. We're going to dig in a little deeper on some of these, some of these thoughts. But I'm going to leave you with John 4, verses 13 through 14. Amen. Good news. Hallelujah. And so Jesus answered. And when Jesus answered, he, he said, Everyone comes up to me. Come on. Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them, hallelujah, will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become as a spring of water, welling up to what? Eternal life. Amen. And so the best way for us to avoid dehydration is to what? What do we say? Drink. The best way for you to avoid thirst is to drink. And you don't wait until you are thirsty to drink. Amen? We wait until we look like the dog in the park before we start to drink and reach for a glass of water. We wait till we look like the little chipmunk with the, with the bottle of Coke until we go looking for a glass of water. And then it's not enough. Amen? You need to do this on a daily basis. You need to renew you need to renew your thoughts, renew your mind, and renew your spirit regularly. So when we gather together each week to worship the Lord, when we read our Bibles and pray to the Lord regularly, when you're partaking of the water that never runs dry, when you are taking time to be in worship, to be in prayer, to commune, to pray, to, to reach out, to fellowship, these are all ways that we are partaking of the water that never runs dry. So when you're in communion with God, you're stepping away from this emergency tank and jumping into the river. Amen? Who's that amen with me? Get out of just the emergency tank. God, we're in crisis. We need something. God, where are you? When are you going to end the crisis? Get right into the river. 
jump right into the river of his spirit, hallelujah, and get in there, be refreshed. You don't have to leave your house to be refreshed. You don't have to drive to the store to be refreshed. You don't have to wait for a shipment from Amazon to be refreshed. You can drink from the spring right now, amen? You can drink from the spill this spring because it's welling up into eternal life. And you know that that well is, if you are a born again believer, this is on the inside of you, amen? Amen? It is on the inside of you. So when you are feeling dry, when you're feeling thirsty, you need to call upon the well that is in you. You need to stir up the gift, as they used to say, on the inside of you. Hallelujah. When we were young, we used to say that we had rivers of life, what? Flowing out of me to that makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. It opens prison doors and sets the captives free because we've got a river of life flowing out of us. Spring up, oh well, Jesus. Hallelujah. And within my soul and spring up and make me whole. Amen. We're asking God to help us to have life abundantly. You need to allow that to spring up on the inside of you, wherever you are right now. You know that we are with you. And he said where two or three are gathered, that he's in the midst to bless us. So just ask him just to pour it on, pour out that water on you today. Pour out that water on you today. Go ahead and go swim, go jump in the river of his spirit today. Some of us are in need of answers today. Some of us are in need of healing today. Some of us are in need of just comfort today. Some of us need to know that we are not alone today. We are not able. We are not able. We are not able to make it on our own. There is no way your finances will not fix it. No government checks will fix it. No deferments going to fix it. Nothing will fix it. You need to get into the spirit of his word today. Oh God, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, hallelujah. We need an abundance of rain in the time of drought, oh God. We need an abundance of rain in the time of drought, oh God. We need an abundance of rain in the time of drought, oh God. We need to be flowing in the river of your spirit, oh Lord, that we will never, 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 never forsake you, oh God, for broken cisterns, for, for popularity, oh God, for relationships, oh God, for money, oh God, for, for other securities, jobs, oh God. These are all things that are broken cisterns, oh Lord, for promises, for governments, God, whatever is supplied to us, God, those are all broken sisters. They have flaws. They all have flaws, but we need to be washed by the, and renewed by the water of your word today, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so I'm saying, he, God is here to repair. He's here to restore. He's here to refresh. And this is the time. I mean, when things are, when you are in a desert season, the smallest glass of water is refreshing, amen? When you are truly thirsty, it is we, you appreciate that glass of water more than anything else. You no longer say, girl, that's not Dasani. I don't want that. Oh, you know what? That's, that, that, that's, that's got a pH level too high for me. I'm not going to drink that. You don't say that. You don't say that. When you're thirsty, you're like, give it to me if it's clean, please. And if it's not clean, I'm going to pray over it because I'm thirsty. Because <laughs> I'm thirsty, Amen. Because I'm thirsty. Are you thirsty? I tell me, if you need God today, just say type thirsty in the chat. Come on, God help us. If you thirsty today, you could not care less. You could not care less. You have to rethink that thing. Just the other day, Mike and I had ordered some food and we were just hungry. We just wanted some Jamaican food, some rice and peas and something else. And I didn't feel like cooking. And I'm going to tell you what, that food showed up and they did not put enough food in that plate. And we were just like, I'm going to eat every inch. And I promise you, Mike said that he may have found an eyelash in his food. And he said, if we was at the restaurant, I'd say, send this back. But I'm so hungry, I'm going to finish this plate. Hallelujah. <laughs> when you're thirsty, you're thirsty. <laughs> when you're thirsty, you're thirsty. When you're hungry, you're hungry. When you're thirsty, you're thirsty. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Lisa said styrofoam is very filling. Oh, my God. She said she turned to eat styrofoam. God bless y'all. <laughs> but like I said, like this is good news to us. We have access to the water, amen, to the source of the water, the groundwater, the rain, what, the flowing of the water. And he said that when you are renewed, when you are a born again believer, that that water, that well springs up unto life right from the inside of you. You can turn it on anytime, amen. So just turn it on. Don't be waiting. You didn't got to wait for Sunday. You didn't got to wait for Zoom to be working. Turn it on. Just turn it on. Yes. I see my sister that she said, a well that never runs dry. Hallelujah. I love it. I love it. Come to the water. Yes, God. So even as we're here today, guys, I'm going I'm to say, let's just go ahead and pray during this time. And we're just asking God right now as we're, as we're wrapping up. I hope you come back next week because we got stuff to, we got, we got, we're going to get in a little further. We're going to be refreshed even as we're in our homes today. These are going to be just rivers of living water throwing, filling up and flowing through your house and flowing on the inside of you. So everyone that talks to you and connects with you, 
says you got something different. You're doing something different over there. I thought we were struggling together. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not struggling. We are filled with the water of life. Amen. And so, Father, even as we're praying today, God, right now, as we are here connected together online, I pray, God, that right now that you are just filling us with the joy of the Lord today, God, that we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so, God, I'm asking that you'll continue to fill us up, that because you have, you are giving us everlasting life, we have everlasting life because we know the source and the source is on the inside of us, God, that you are helping us to be renewed and refreshed and to know that we can activate it anytime, that we don't have to wait for a special person, a special preacher, a special service to be activated in your spirit, Lord. And so I pray, God, that you will fill and refresh us also, that when we come together, that we will become that river that pours out into the cities and streams and affects the world with your goodness and your glory. God, we thank you for all you've done and are doing for us. And so, God, even as we're here, we're just going to go ahead and worship you. Hallelujah. And if you need a couple more minutes just to soak right now in prayer, I'm just going to give you some minutes to spend. I'm going to play a little music and just go ahead and worship him right where you are. And I pray for here today. I pray that each person that was here would have been refreshed and renewed. And I pray, God, that we'll continue to find ways to step into that river of life. The Lord, not even step in, but to bubble it up to the surface, God, even as you've given it to us. So, Father, meet us where we are today, whether we're on the job, whether we're at home, if we're in the hospital, in the sickbed. God, wherever you find us, that we allow that water to bubble up, to give, renew us, to refresh us, so that we can still be your beacons of light and truth in the world, God. That we can be at the right answer to the world today, oh God. That we won't go with what everybody else is saying, that we are able to show and show Jesus Christ at a time when the world may truly be listening. Thank you for this opportunity to join together, and I pray that we will all come together again next week. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody in the church say, Amen.